What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today, another exciting video. Today we're gonna to be previewing the release of One UI 5.0, which of course will be Android 13 for your Samsung Galaxy devices. I'm gonna be talking about five features I would like to see personally come to One UI 5.0. The beta will be starting up here probably in July. I talked about this in a previous video. I'll link it below if you guys are interested. Also, a couple of things to remind you guys up, up front before we get started. We do have the giveaway going on for May. If you guys want to enter that to win a flagship phone, I'll drop the link below. My newsletter sign up still going on. I'll drop the link there. Samsung also has their biggest pre-order event in quite a while. I'm going to drop the link below if you want to check it out. You can get a $50 bonus by using my link. But let's get right into the content today and talk about these five features from One UI 5.0 that I'm looking forward to, my Google Keep document, as always. And the very first thing is one that's probably going to come as no surprise to you guys, and that is integrated GoodLock. Now, I talk about GoodLock on this channel all the time. It's one of the most powerful tools to customize your Galaxy device. GoodLock will let you customize your lock screen, your quick settings, your clock, um, basically your notifications, your app drawer, your home screen, uh, change your icon pack using Theme Park, uh, modify your S Pen, your Samsung keyboard. It has all kinds of great customization options, but I really don't understand why Samsung doesn't just bake all of these modules and options from GoodLock directly into the One UI 5.0 software. These modifications to the keyboard, the S Pen, your wallpaper, the custom icon packs, um, clock face, and all that stuff could easily be done in the regular settings. There's already a lot of customization there, so I understand that in some sense they may not want to clutter it up anymore, but these aren't things that people are going to find annoying because a lot of them are really useful features that allow you to customize your phone as much as possible. What I would really like to see them do is inside the settings, when you go to home screen or wallpaper and style or theme, they add all of these settings in the appropriate place, and then you can just find these, customize your icons, your wallpaper, etc., and you don't need to install this extra app that a lot of people don't even know about because that really kind of excludes some people from doing it, changing their icon packs, unless they watch a channel like mine and find out about these features. The next thing is Expert Raw combined with the camera app. Now this is another case where Samsung has a separate app to do something that could easily be integrated with the regular camera app. Now, as you guys know, I've talked about Expert Raw a couple of times. Inside the regular camera app, there is the ability to shoot in raw mode. You can do that inside the camera app. However, one thing that you can't do is get this kind of expert raw where it also uses the AI to do a lot of processing with the photos. In order to get that functionality, you have to download the app Expert Raw from the Play, uh, not the Play Store, the Galaxy Store from Samsung themselves directly. This allows you to shoot things in raw mode, but also get some of that AI computational photography magic that's baked into Samsung's camera software. There's really no reason though that they couldn't just put Expert Raw as an option in the regular camera app, right? We have all these other modes here in the camera app. Why don't you just put another mode down here, call it Expert Raw, and then switch over to the Expert Raw app interface? I guess that could make the camera app a little more, perhaps a little slower, but only in that particular mode where people would be expecting it anyway. And so this would also avoid people having to download an extra app. And again, a lot of people don't know about this app, so then they don't get to use the full functionality of their Galaxy S22 Ultra, when really they could be putting that to use to take better photos in a lot of situations. The next thing is themed icons for third-party apps. And what I mean by this is when you long press on your home screen, we know from Android 12, if you go to wallpapers and styles, you go to color palette down here, you can apply your color palette to app icons. Um, now I've got a third-party icon pack, but if you do apply it to your app icons, these are only going to apply to the Samsung apps and maybe a few of the Google apps it's not going to apply to all of your third-party apps. So if you do apply this and you go back to your home screen, if you have this default icon pack, it's not gonna theme your Twitter icon, your Instagram icon, my eBay icon, all of these third-party icons that, that are very, very popular apps, they do not get themed using uh, the Material U theming in Android 12 and also the small sweet tweaks that Samsung made to One UI 4.1. It'd be really nice to see in One UI 5.0 if you go into wallpaper and style, you choose your favorite color palette. Down here is the option to do this, but when you apply it, it still interpolates that to all of the third-party icons, so everything looks nice and uniform if you're someone who likes to use this theming engine to sort of bring everything together. I personally like third-party icon packs, so for me, it's not a huge deal, but a lot of people like the simplicity of Material U theming, and this would certainly make their life a lot easier. The next thing is custom charging animations. Now, you probably know this for a long time, I should have brought my charger to actually demonstrate this. 
But when you plug in your Samsung device to charge, there's a little animation that lights up the screen, shows you the percentage, and then down here on the always on display, it's gonna show you the time remaining to fully charge up your device, and also the type of charging, super fast charging, fast charging, or super fast charging 2.0 on the S22 Ultra. Now, Samsung does have a pretty decent charging animation, but one thing they don't have that a lot of other manufacturers uh, in China, like Xiaomi, Huawei, um, all these different manufacturers have, is a custom charging animation that you can change in the settings. So on a lot of these Xiaomi phones, if you go into your settings and you go into something like lock screen or perhaps the battery settings, there will be a setting in there to change your battery animation. And they got some cool ones that makes it look at like the battery is actually kind of uh, getting particles of charge from around, like it's like a star and sucking the particles of charge into its gravitational field. There's some really cool stuff that some of the Chinese brands have done. And I think Samsung could really add an extra layer of customization. They already have a lot of customization on their device. So why not just go that extra mile and add custom charging animations? Something very small, but something I would enjoy and I think a lot of other people would enjoy because people get bored of the same charging animation. And if you're into Android phones, you're into tech, you love customizing your device. The last thing is adaptive brightness with learning for the always on display. Now, you may not know this, but when you use your Samsung device and you have always on um, adaptive brightness on, which I do right now, so if you go into display, if you turn on adaptive brightness right here, your Samsung device actually learns your preferences over time. So when you have the adaptive brightness on, right, you can adjust the brightness slider up or down to your preferences in certain situations. So over time, it will learn like, when do you want it brighter? When do you want it dimmer? That way the adaptive brightness is not only adapting to the environment, but also adapting to your personal preferences. Now you can also set adaptive display, uh, adaptive brightness on the always on display, but if you do that, it takes a lot of battery, and of course you can also crank it up to max brightness, which I sometimes do because I always have an image of my sun, it's hard to see without having high brightness, but the always on display adaptive brightness does not learn from your preferences. So if you change it up or down in certain situations to see what's on your display, either your icons or you have an image clock like I do, it doesn't learn over time. It's not doing that smart adjustments like you get for adaptive brightness on the regular display. That's something that would not only improve the always on display experience, but would also improve your battery life over time so you don't have to crank up that brightness to full max if you have an image clock like I do. Anyway, those are my five things. There's probably some other ones, so if people find this video interesting, I'll certainly make another video if you guys want to talk about more of these features or let me know which features you want to see in One UI 5.0 in the comments below. I'll drop the link to my newsletter, the giveaway, as well as Samsung's next big pre-order product if you guys want to check it out in the link in the description, the pinned comment. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon for future videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.